Good evening, RPG Limit Break. You are about to enter a zone. A zone with a higher than normal threat level. A zone in which we fight some ancient evil to be named later. Welcome, everybody, to the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise League. I am Trenton, and I am joined tonight by k How are you tonight? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks a lot. You hyped for this? Oh, absolutely. Well, we have been building to it for a while now. A uh, little bit different flags than what we ran in the qualifiers. You know, they try and scale up the difficulty a little bit, so the treasures won't be as good, the shops won't be as good. You want to talk about some of the other things we're going to see? Yeah, we've got K2, uh, which means that our some of our key item rewards are going to be coming through, could come through uh, Lunar Subterrain bosses, the Odin spot, the uh, Leviathan or Ashura spot. We've uh, got the C1, so Edge and Fasoya are a little bit harder to find that may have been in the league qualifiers as well. Um, our P1 flag the pass is going to be mixed amongst the key items as opposed to a shop item. Um, T3 flag, so our chests are, you know, could contain anything except the high level item rewards, which could also be mixed in with the uh, Lunar Subterrain bosses, Odin, Leviathan, Ashura, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, we also, one thing that's just kind of random is we have the uh, the money flag is off, so weak items are still going to show up in chests. You're not going to get a GP equivalent for that. Um, and another major difference is the J1 flag, which uh, instead of having uh, Japanese spells, you just got the items. So some of your uh, early things like Yang's power that could uh, be a, a definite boost for the early game bosses, you don't have that option available. You don't uh, can't take a gamble with... Uh, um, tell us recall and hopefully get lucky so that's makes things a little bit interesting and our uh wyvern flag is also off so finding wyvern could be uh, a pain early uh, it is uh boss one flag so there's a limit to how much wyvern control you we could still always be guarding the crystal so. oh yeah you have to be careful yep 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 no free lunch is going to make it a little more difficult to get your early party together. Uh, it basically means that aside from your two starting characters, you're going to pretty much have to fight to get anybody else, or need an item to unlock them. So, depending on who you start with, Yang's actually a great character to start with in a no free lunch seed. Yes, one of the things you really don't want to see, uh, especially Edward to start, um, but you also don't want to get a, a slew of white mages or weak black mages to start because uh, he can't do too much if he, a difficult boss is on East Hobbs or something like that. Uh, so the two early questions we're going to have is who's our second character and what item do we start with? Do you think it's going to be a key item? Um, You always hope for it, but... Uh, you know, mostly, maybe you'll get the white shirt. You never know. Cat, place your guesses now. What's the first item of the game gonna be? I'm gonna guess Spoon. Spoon? Yeah. That could be good. Spoon. I'm thinking, I'm still thinking white shirt. White shirt. The runners got the countdown. We will see them off to the races any moment. Okay. It looks like we're off. <laughs> that uh, that could qualify as commentator's curse but uh, on the other hand starting with the darkness crystal is like the second most hyped thing you could start with oh absolutely that gives you uh, instant moon access gives you access to a shop up there and with the s2 flags on the items are biased towards uh so your good items are going to be in later game shops so there could be some good items up in the on the moon as well. Plus, you get a free character on the uh, the lunar throne. Yeah, I can't imagine a scenario where getting the darkness crystal, I wouldn't pretty well go straight to the moon. Although uh, there is a lot to be said for getting the items as fast as you can. You yeah, it to... looks. Go ahead. I uh, said so it looks like Couch is doing just that, going straight for the moon, while everybody else is gonna loot Baron. Everybody had to fight for their spot to get in here, so you don't want to take any of this for granted. If you kind of wanted a tail of the tape, I would call Couch the favorite out of this group. Uh, 
you could look at the SRL standings and it's well up there. And uh, he's been around for a while doing this. Oh, absolutely. And uh, all three of the four runners, this is their first race of the league. Mr. Ubik, um, sorry, Z-Man raced on the 31st and he took third in that race. But everyone else, this is their first one for the league. Heroin shirt is a nice pickup that you could potentially make it a good archer out of. One of our nice ladies. They don't have to just do magic. Nope, especially early game. Uh, archer is fantastic, but just don't forget to take that heroin shirt off before you go to Zeromus if that's going to be your white mage. <laughs> mentioned it that the Hummingway cave there is an item shop here this is what in k1 will get a lot of people but the pass could be for sale here tense is actually a really nice item i would have liked to have gotten a few of less important with the big whale i guess but for some of the dungeons where you don't want to double back to a save point Rydia is our sand ruby character Okay, it looks like Couch is getting ready to check out who's in the Lunar Throne. And pretty much anything but a duplicate is going to be a welcome sight at this point. This also has the potential to be somebody better, and Rosa is certainly better. Yes, getting Rosa early, everyone would be happy to see. Um, I know I would be thrilled to get her early, especially with that heroin shirt. We have the no free lunch flags and the C1 flags. It's going to be much more likely in a location like this is where you're going to find Edge or Pistoia. Other locations where that might happen include if you get the vanilla Edge recruitment spot uh, through the Cave of Evelyn. It looks like Mr. Ubik dodged the uh, the blocking lady as well. Good for him. <laughs> if that is an achievement in any seed. If you haven't talked to her recently, try it sometime. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's worth talking to her. Oh, and that's definitely one thing about this randomizer. It's a blast. If you're not if you're not racing it, definitely go through and talk to everybody. There's a lot of unique and really funny dialogue throughout this entire this entire hack. It's fantastic. So now we have the potential for route divergence to open up. Does somebody go to Hobbs to get the character? Dusty has head to Antlion Cave to try and do the boss here. I don't know. If you picked up any jabs yet, a dancing dagger, you'll probably be fine. And the yeah. antline spot only has about 1,000 HP. Um, so if you can deal some fairly okay damage early on, uh, this could be a pretty quick and easy key item if it's not too trolly of a boss. Bluefail is never an unwelcome sight. I like to come here with something that is likely to kill the boss, so a Gaia drop, for example, is probably gonna, if not one shot the boss, put me close. Yes, and I've uh, I found with the with these flags, I do like to try to find uh, hourglasses as well, because there's some some bosses um, stopping them or slowing them is definitely a uh, a big advantage. Many are susceptible. So hope everybody's having a great Friday evening. So glad you decided to spend some of it with us here watching the Free Enterprise League on RPG Limit Break. Thanks, RPG Limit Break, for hosting us tonight. And thank you, JC, for being our restreamer tonight. It is so appreciated. And also a big thank you to Golden Hades, who is our tr running our tracker tonight. Looks like Couch found the hourglasses I was just talking about in Toria. I did not see whether he bought any or not. I know he was selling in that shop. Here's the Magus sisters. This is a pretty nice spot for them to be at. Just because their hit points will be so low and split between the three. Yes, once you take out Cindy, it's not too bad. 
Fire 2 is probably going to hurt, though. Like anything wouldn't hurt Edward, but still. Well, Edward's doing what Edward does best and is laying on the floor. <laughs> to kind of wrap up the idea I was talking about earlier, where I like to have a guy drum, you come in here with the three of them, and you drop that guy drum, you at least have the two sisters down, so you're not taking that first fire two, but I think this is going to end up being a reset for Dusty. Yep, you're right, and Couch did find Star Veils, which are very important if you run into a Golbez fight. Throw down Star Veil, and uh, he can't hit you. Um, or an early Ashura that you can double Star Veil and, and you don't have ac if you don't have access to Wall. Dusty's going to go for round two against the Magus Sisters. And this is what exactly what I was talking about earlier with the J the J1 flag. Um, this is a good time where Yang's power would be useful against Cindy, um, but since he doesn't have it, he just has to attack like normal. Ooh. That'll do the job. Yeah, sure will. <laughs> now, none of these are guaranteed to be a key item, although in this case it's the Tower of Apple Key, so certainly is. But there's a lot more places that are in the mix when we're talking about the K2 flags. Yes, I, I can't. I don't remember. Has anyone checked East Hobbs yet to see which character is up there? I don't think we've seen anyone route that direction. Uh, Z-Man and Dusty have gone for the theoretically easiest boss we have access to right now. And also with the no free lunch flag, there is the potential for Rydia's mom to hold a very important key item. So let's hope we don't come down to a uh, hunt for the mist dragon somewhere. And what that can really troll you is if the uh, mist dragon is on the moon and then you have to go back. Oh, absolutely. That is such a pain if it's in just an obscure and awkward spot. <laughs> this couch can be defensible with just the three. Now that's there's an advantage to doing that. Um, I don't see Couch needing to right now, but sometimes after say the Antlion boss or right after Hobbs, go into Fabul because you get a free heal before and after the Fabul gauntlet. So if your HP is low, you can save some time by running in and getting healed up right before that gauntlet. And at the end of the gauntlet, you also get healed once again. Dancing Dagger does decent damage here. Plus, Rosa is an archer. I don't think Z-Man's going to have too much room to get to Ghost City. Yep, Mindy can cause some issues, too, with her uh, black magic, but it's not, uh, not too bad. And you may be used to the idea that some of the J items go right through a wall. For instance, the guy drums do because it's Quake, the, the uh, Stardust will go through a wall as well. That's not going to be the case if you, for example, try to use a Zeus Rage. That's going to reflect right back on me. Yes, so will Hourglasses. They'll come right back to you. Um, it looks like Couch found Yang in Fabul. Yang is attacking his own kingdom. Well, he is the most rude character in the game. Not denying his usefulness, but he is still the most rude character in the game. And Dusty took the route up to the moon, pick up Rosa. I'm sure he's happy to see her. Never played FF4. Gotta fix that. It's classic. Uh, Final Fantasy IV, my, one of my favorites. I think it was my first Final Fantasy, first Super Nintendo game I ever, well, yes, that I ever played. Uh, I could not read yet, and I played it and had no clue what I was doing. A couple years down the road, I picked it back up and fell in love with it. Sandy is giving us the business with this charm. Yang is a little confused here. Oh, Yang seems to have gotten himself back in, but Rose's Rosa. residual charm has uh, caused her to hold Yang in place. So this obviously has been a non-trivial boss. 
and Couch has successfully defended Fabul against his traitor. It just goes to show what a good strategy Dusty had on that reset, where he used the Zeus Rage right away to get enough damage on them. Right, and I think he might have been just trying to save that, and when he realized what was going on, he said, not worth it. And it looks like Couch picked up the hook, which definitely is a good find. Another free character, uh, and another shop. Another item shop, but uh, also the equipment shops, which in S2 gain in value. Yes, and there's always a possibility that this is the only access to the underworld. Uh, so you hopefully... just think horrible trolley thoughts, don't you? <sighs> it's bad, it's bad. I always think the worst. The worst. The hook seeds are definitely the bane of my existence, and probably most of these runners as well. One thing the hook will do for you, though, is that character you get access to, you don't actually have to go through a boss fight to get them. Right, so if you have exits, and you don't want to go through that whole underground, um, you can go pick that up and exit right away. Or save outside and do a quick reset if it's not somebody you like. You asked about this play earlier, now we're going to find out who's on this. Or a Chew Mountain, as I like to call it. I, I believe... I believe Mr. Ubik checked it earlier and reset right out because for that uh, exact reason. would be a good reason to reset out. And Couch is taking the same strategy. <laughs> we also have Rydia is as napping in Kaipo as well, so he uh, Sand Ruby could definitely get uh, pick that up. So not really. It's kind of an unnecessary Golbez. Um, Z-Man is also thinking about what he's going to do and decides to reset as well. <laughs> Yeah, you, the fight is very doable if you have uh, either star or moon bales, despite the levels, because the, the damage that Golbez will do if you're able to reflect it is not terrible. Silk webs for sale is a very great one. It'll cast two stacks of slow on an enemy. Right, and Couch also did pick up, I believe it was Couch picked up Starvale earlier, or maybe it was Z-Man. I see Z-Man have some in his inventory, but I, I guess he decided that the uh, it was not worth the trouble. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting call either way. Lives are for sailors, this, this is set for bulls, so that's going to be very important, most likely for their leveling strategies. Yes, you definitely want to use life if you want to do the Dragon Machine grind, which is would be uh, the spots available, but we don't have a character that can cast weak yet. Um, but you can get some massive experience off that D-Machine grind. Yeah, also, the levels are a little too low right now to start it. That's why they would want so many life potions. In just a normal run of the game with Randomizer, you probably aren't going to use more than 10 life potions. But 40 means you want to be ready for a D-Machine grind. Even if you're not going to do it, you still want to be ready for it instead of doubling back for the heal potions later. Absolutely. And they're also really cheap. I want to say they're 100 GP each, so it's not going to break the bank to pick up a whole bunch of them. Yeah, you'd always rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. I've always found they come in uh, good use in Zaromas, too, sometimes if you... Uh... Uh, misplaced nuke and big bang you can quickly get somebody up we also see cure threes for sale on the moon so we know they're going to have access to that couch just picked up the tower key uh, and dusty and z-man are both uh, fighting the traitor of fabul slightly different routing but has basically put everybody in the same place. They've all covered the same ground. Uh, nobody has checked the vanilla Mist Dragon spot or vanilla Octomon spot, which are potential locations of the Mist Dragon. They are. You could also run into uh, somebody you don't want to see there, um, but it also, at the same time, if you find Fasoya somewhere, that would unlock a couple more of his spells. If you were to find him, let's say we find him in the uh, Eblin Cave that Couch is going to check out right now. So if you want a quick unlock of uh, a couple of his spells, do those two bosses. 
We also have the Baron Inn as of yet not touched. And who was waiting in the Baron Inn? I believe that was Sid. The Baron Inn can be a tricky fight. The first fight is, is uh, decept deceptively easy, and then the second fight is kind of a mess. Um, that uh, that 4,000 HP spot uh, can be a pain early on. The uh, 400, 400 HP from the first fight, you think you're good to go, and then you hit a, uh, a crappy second fight. Makes it a little uh, makes it a little tricky. It looks like Mr. Ubik is gonna try just that with the Dark Imps. We do know, well, we did know that it couldn't beat Gobez. These Dark Imps will hit hard. Not well, true. also, well, also with uh, the flags we have, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there has to be a path to the underground that does not require that is not blocked by Gobez or Wyvern, which they have by the by uh, the hook, but Golbez or Wyvern yes. cannot be blocking um, the lower battle. So or upper battle. Octomon. Octomon is naturally a very fast character, but this is a slower spot than you normally fight Octomon in. No lightning casts unless you're still holding a Zeus Rage. And yes, and he, he is, yep. Now the thing with Octomom too is he gets uh, slower as his tentacles uh, disappear. So uh, the more damage you start doing, the more tentacles go away, the slower he will get before he ultimately dies. Vanilla Edge recruitment, not random enough. And that's going to unlock a lot of uh, fighting that they wouldn't be able to do initially. Um, because of Edge starting strength and HP and everything like that. So going through the underground here is an option at this point. I think Couch was reluctant to check treasure chests until getting this character. Precisely because of this reason, one of these treasure chests was going to be guarded by the stalemate. And that could have been quite the effort to get through. But Edge's sure, Flame right? Edge's Flame can do some uh, pretty heavy damage early on as well. Oh yes, it is definitely too early to declare any leads. This is totally anybody's race. Oh, I didn't notice that the first time. Uh, Avenger was in place of the Baron Key. Uh, so the Baron item was the Avenger. Okay, so picking up Kane or Cecil at some point might be nice. See what, and what le what do they have left to check on the overworld aside from the Mr. Dragon spot and the Octomom Vanilla spot? As far as K2 goes, I think that's everything in terms of key item locations. But I haven't uh, have we seen actually, right or deals? That's what I could not think of. I don't know why. I try to block that one out of my memory. Ordeals is, is never fun to do unless you have to. That, it kind of loses its urgency in no free lunch, so there's no character up there to go along with the item. And also, if you haven't picked up uh, Tella, then you're not in any priority to get his spells unlocked. And did Couch just pick up an Artemis bow from that Staleman bot, um, treasure chest? Could very well have been. An Artemis bow with a heroin shirt and uh, some decent arrows for Rosa would put out some nice damage. You could also give the heroin bow to, I mean, sorry, the Artemis bow to Edward and have him be a little useful temporarily. Yeah, he's holding the dancing dagger. That's useful enough. Well, I like to pick up the ten cabins. That's usually about right for the sea. Use uh, something, something like six is what I normally go through. I've always found that cabins are something uh, that you don't think you're going to need, and then you wish you had them, especially after grinding or after a really nasty boss fight. 
Yeah, in particular, somewhere like Mount Ordeals, where you got the two boss fights, you don't want to have to go back in the magic points after a big first fight. And I think Couch is going to go for... Oh, he's going to go for Ordeals. I figured he would go to Baron. But it looks like he's going to check out the top of the mountain. You know, canon order. Normally you do this first. And Ubik has found Edge. Yeah, that's gonna be a very welcome sight. So when people were asking about a lead earlier, really what gives you a lead is when you do something that other people either haven't done or aren't going to do for a while. And thus far, we really haven't seen anything like that until Mr. Ubik just decided to make a liar out of him. Oh, is Mr. Ubik checking? Uh, is he is he diving in? He sure is. It looks to be. No, it's Sid. He's got the full party. He hasn't checked Mount Ordeals, and he hadn't checked for those best locations and uh, opening chest up here can be a little tricky I believe there's a trap chest in here so uh, if he didn't save he might have a bad time if he finds a trap chest in uh, here that, that so biggest question is do you have the size spell right if you don't have that you probably don't want to mess with it and uh, couch is fighting the dark knight up on ordeals a little out of place but in his relatively vanilla spot kind of right Mr. general Ubik. area he's just a little lost yeah he, he went out for a little walk artemis arrows in the uh chest up in Babel. um i don't think he found the artemis bow though did I mention that one of the chests is guarded by mad ogres? You may have. <laughs> did I mention I would want this, the uh, size spell for this? I think you did. Looks like he's going to stop him with an hourglass, though. That could be beneficial if they didn't queue up an attack. Looks like he got fortunate with that as well. Let's keep going for some treasures. We found the element money or some of this stuff. That could be rough. I hope he saved it with him. I don't think he did. I think he went straight through, but he handled Rubicon no problem. Um, Edge is pretty powerful. Which is probably why Mr. Ubik is taking that uh, is taking that gamble and going through uh, the ba uh, upper battle or yeah upper battle um, because he does have edge and edge can kind of pull that Sid also is is pretty tanky okay Ubik is actually doing a neat strategy here people get used to the idea of the life potions being in used in a grind fight. so for famous examples the D machines but you can use it in some of these other high experience fights to squeak more out of it. And that's what Ubik did using the light potions on the Mad Dragons as they were going. Oh, hi, Bahamut. Oh! That's probably right. That's a good spot to see him, too, because that is a low HP spot. So you can pretty much make quick work of Bahamut. And you don't have to worry about him in a guarding a potential necessary key item uh, later on. There was a question in chat about the Darkness Crystal Bait, and I'm not sure what they meant specifically, but we've already seen the Moon character. That was Rosa. And what was the character from Ordeals? I was I was watching Ubik use life potions on ogres. No free lunch, so no character at Ordeals. I'm talk I mean key item, I'm sorry. I looked <laughs> away. <laughs> Yeah, if you so. Well, you know what? We've got the harp on the tracker, so thanks to our great uh, tracker for keeping up with that. So it's got to be the twin harp. All right, yeah. I was, like I said, I was watching the wrong, uh, the wrong corner for that current time. 
you anticipate you got time on one side and then all of a sudden <laughs> okay so let's overview what's going on here we're about the half hour mark this is the final fantasy 4 free enterprise randomizer so we start with the airship that's the free enterprise and then we randomize in particular treasures and bosses so we get uh, my actually that's the elements not just my LT, here in a location where we normally would not fight them they get scaled down to the location that they're in some are still harder than others and we have to find the important key items particularly we have to find a way to get to the final boss we have that with the darkness crystal we have to have a way to beat the final boss which means we need the crystal itself and we have to have enough power to actually do it and mr ubik is using uh, one of the strategies i talked about earlier picking up those hourglasses the uh baron guards are one of those bosses that are susceptible to status ailments so uh, he immediately used stop on them, and he can pretty much just hack away at them to uh, finish his fight. So I'm sure he's pretty happy he picked those up. Um, and this is going to be really useful for him to get through. Now, the biggest question here is who is the next fight going to be? Because the Rubicon spot is, is a tough one. This is a high HP location. The Rubicon spot is 24,000 HP. So uh, having Bygen here is, is tough because he's a tricky fight in itself. At this point, will Yubik try for it? Will he could bow out, come back later? <laughs> so sleep at this point that the Twin Harp location is still a possibility. He's going to... It looks like he is going to take a save, uh, a safety save up here. Now, I'm not sure if he's planning on bowing out because he did use a cabin, uh, and there is a free f heal before the Rubicant spot, so I don't know if he just overlooked that or if he's planning on bowing out, but by, based on his equipment changing, it looks like he's getting ready to go for it. I think so, but you can understand where you'd want to take a shot since you're here. I apologize if you hear my kids yelling in the background. The next generation of speedrunners. I am particularly fond of the twins in Final Fantasy IV, as I have identical twins myself. I know the twins are not identical in the game, but they're still twins nonetheless. And he's going to looks like he's going to use a Zeus Rage, uh, hopefully before that wall got up, but he's going to go ahead and reset. Uh, question in chat, what flags are different? I would say the most significant change is going from K1 to K2, so we have more item locations in play. Yes, yeah, someone... Knight D made a comment, Couch is avoiding the hook like the plague. Uh, he thinks like I think does not want to have to go under there. I kind of fall into the same line of thought, not necessarily avoiding going the hook round, but I like to have the main world cleared out before I go to the sub world. I can't you know, say I it's don't... always the right strategy, but at least then I know I'm not forgetting something. And I don't know if we've found sirens yet, uh, which definitely make the grind a lot easier, but we do have access to Big Whale, so D-Machine Grind is also a possibility, like I said before. Um, I would personally still rather grind with sirens in the underworld. It is much faster. Depends on who you are and what you can execute. Personally, me, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot execute that D-Machine grind uh, to save my life. Um, well, efficiently, rather. So, uh, I always roll for Sirens if I can. Um, but, this is the League, so we will probably doing, we'll probably see uh, more of the difficult tricks if you want to get ahead in this. I want to give a quick tip of the cap to uh, the strategy we just saw Couch use. 
went in with everybody having something metal equipped so that the fight would immediately end as soon as it started. Chat, get ready to name that tune because we're about to hear the harp song. I love this Easter egg. This is my favorite Easter egg. Oh, I don't nice. Know how many songs uh, Boardface started this with? I know it's been added to, but uh, what a great little extras. I do want to absolutely commend everyone that's worked on this randomizer. This is probably one of the most well done randomizers I've ever seen. It uh, it's really breathed a lot of new life into this game. Um, brought a huge community together of people who normally had not or had kind of finished playing. Uh, makes it so much. It, it's really brought a lot of fun back to it. Vic is in there fighting against this bygone fight, so. And Couch is gonna do the uh, method I talked about earlier with double star veil to throw a um, <clears throat> throw a, a wall on Ashura so she cannot heal herself. Now this is um, an interesting spot to get Asura in. Having Edge, well, having the three melee characters I think helps a lot. Yeah, she does hit pretty nasty. She counters um, every attack with some form of counter, but it's not too particularly nasty. Um, so he should be able to get through this. It might be a little longer than he wanted, but he should be able to get through this. I thought we had mute arrows as well. Those will do very nice damage in this fight. Mute is your friend against Asura. If you've got the mute arrows, the silent staff, you're going to enjoy the damage that that does here. Yes, Mr. Ubik is, uh, is, is certainly having a time with Bygen down here. I guess you could say this is the battle for the advantage. One of these runners is right, and whichever one gets past their fight first. Yeah, it could turn out the couch gets something that's worthless and has to go right where uh, Ubik is, so... He just finishes, finishes her off, and we're going to find out what he picks up. Zerk is also a great spell to learn. Could it lead down another rabbit hole, or could it be a dead end? Sand Ruby, so that uh, is access to Iridia. Oh, you about to say goodbye to Edward. Yep. Getting a black mage is good. Now you want to be looking through. Uh, if you find a uh, a nice summon, such as Self, that could be beneficial. Because um, there's a programming oversight, uh, and Self does not use MP. So once you get ready to 35 MP, you can use Self as much as you want. Fairly decent uh, attack, and it also lowers enemy magic defense and heals your party. There's a question in chat basically about how, what options you can play with the randomizer. If you check the website for the Free Enterprise randomizer, what you'll see is basically everything is a flag. And you really choose the level of randomization that you want to do. So you can have a fairly vanilla experience playing the game and just randomize the bosses. Or you can change everything. You could also just play the game as normal, um, bosses in their normal location, and just fly around with the Enterprise. Oh, even then, you can still choose to land the Enterprise in the vanilla order if you so desire. But if you haven't it checked is... out free Enterprise, I would definitely recommend recommend it big time. Ubik is just continuing to work through this easy fight. Uh, not easy fight, the, this challenging fight. What I was thinking is how much easier this fight would be if we had one of the good summons for Rydia. Bahamut, of course, is number one, but Leviathan is also one that can do a lot of damage and doesn't care about no wall. 
Yeah, Ubik is, uh, is definitely grinding away with this fight. And we say goodbye to Edward and pick up Rydia. The other thing that happens with going and doing the Asura fight first is, other than Rydia, everybody's going to be at a higher level. So you've got that much more damage in the bank for fighting Bygone. Now what Ubik got Ubik really needs to hope to finish this fight because losing this fight he may opt to turn around and go do ordeals which would put him significantly behind because we've got Dusty Griff now going to uh, fight Ashura as Seaman is also fighting Ashura as well. They've all taken sort of the clear the overworld first route. Which is able to put point in the right direction is the good thing about that. In this case, Ubik has picked the right route. We know that. Yes, this is the way. This is what you have to do. You have to go through the underground, or through Upper Babel to get to the underground. But um, it's this is tough. This is what you don't want to see. Thank you, Grumoro, for the sub to RPG Limit Break. We love seeing them get uh, support, and they've been a great friend to Free Enterprise. It's probably also worth noting, I don't know if we actually saw this, but Edge's Flame will go right through the wall, but he doesn't have that many magic points, so he can't use it enough to really take a huge whack out of Bygone's HP. He's certainly chipping away. Ever so slightly chipping away at that 24,000 HP. Um, now, I am not too familiar when you have multiple targets. Is that boss spot split amongst the targets? Generally speaking, yes, although it's not equal distribution. So, for example, the Maga Sisters, uh, it's going to divide it among their HP. So if Middle Sister has 60% of the HP for the fight in the normal location, she would get 60% of the H of Rubicon's HP in this location. I gotcha. Hopefully I'm explaining that right. No, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. I'm not going to try to do the math in my head. Well, don't do math while live on Twitch. It'll always betray you. Now, another strategy with the Bygen fight is to knock out a limb. Or a limb. Um, those limbs can uh, deal some nasty physical attacks um, and vampire. So having one down at least gets one out of the way. And you're going to have about a turn or so before he recovers them can't really control that well though he made the decision to zerk yang but you can understand because you get more damage that way however it's produced the issue that you can't control it so yang's not necessarily doing all that damage where you want him to do it well at least you don't have a cpu fight where if you knock out one part you get globe whatever globe 169 or whatever it's called All you do is eat a turn. Someone in chat. He counts as a mage, though, so if you have mute arrows, you should see nice damage from that here. Globe 199. That's the name of the. That is the name of the spell. Thank you. Well, that fight didn't go quite according to plan for Couch. He's about to find out this is Asura. A uh, question in chat has how Magus competed today. This is a race only between these four runners. That's The league structure is such right now that they're just playing uh, as a group of four at any given time. And uh, tell us a little bit about how the, the league structure works out. Is Everybody gets four matches, is that correct? I am not as up on that. I, I didn't enter the league.
From what I've seen, everybody gets. Oh, from what I see, everybody gets a uh, certain amount of points for the matches they compete in. So first place gets you nets you four points, second three, uh, third two, and fourth one. And it looks like uh, that's the best. Um, <laughs> that's best I got on that. Yeah, uh, if you look below the stream, there's upcoming events, and it has the free enterprise schedule and standings. That will take you to the tournament website, so that's probably the best place to start. Well, Couch is going for the bygone fight. Did Couch do a safety save before? That's the question. I did not pay attention. I don't if he know, did not. Poor Reddy is in there with just the one HP. He did safety save. I'm glad he'll be, he's glad he did. Um, yeah, Ubik is still chopping away at this fight. Dusty definitely has the mute arrows. I haven't really s couldn't tell if anybody else has broken those out for this fight. But you've got a couple potential archers still. Rosa, heroin. Artemis, Mute, that would look really nice in this fight. The reward for killing Bygen, that is going to be access to the Underworld. Um, there is there is no other progress that can be made in this seed unless you defeat Bygen. So, uh, they ha every runner if they want to finish the seed, has to get through, has to finish this fight. Ubik has done it! Bygone's down! Just gotta finish off the arms! Yeah, it looks like he's going to... getting a vampire off. I thought that thing was getting ready to uh, explode on him. That was a well-earned victory. You'll even take an explosion. It doesn't matter. You got through the fight. Wow. He persisted. That is impressive, the persistence. I know a lot of runners that, that would have just reset after having that trouble and going right back up to, to take ordeals, but Ubik definitely, uh, you know, he made the right play. That will definitely put him the furthest along the progression chain. It's still an extremely tight race, uh, but he is slightly, Ubik is slightly ahead right now. Now, he does have Edward, which is pretty much dead weight at this current uh, moment, but um, he's in the underworld where you've got potential access for another character in Dwarven Castle. You've got some higher level shops. You've got a key item for free, or a key item spot for free potentially in the Land of the Summoned Monsters. You've got Yang that you can see and get a free uh, item from Sheila. So this definitely opens a lot of stuff here. And they have the tower key. They do have the tower key, which means you could land right here and go for two items. But first, there's a bunch of places you could go. With it being K2, the trapped treasure chests are not included in the mix for hosting the key item spots. Still, Summon Monsters gives you a lot of information. You have the chest that normally houses the Rat Tail, and you have the Leviathan and Asura locations. Even if you're not able to take those bosses on, and we are definitely not able to take those bosses on just yet, but knowing what bosses they are can make a difference. Yes, it's always nice to take a peek, and Couch is having a little bit of issue with Bygen here, um, his edge is persisting. Uh, edge has barrier on, which is is helping a lot. Uh, his the uh, yes, someone said Moonveil. Moonveil also casts uh, barrier as well as wall. We picked one of those up early. This is a great time to use it. Which I learned the hard way. Do not double Moonveil on the Ashura fight. <laughs> you will not win. Don't use it on Zoramos either. <laughs> Don't double use it, that is. Uh, 
Ubik actually did not check Leviathan in this sura that I saw. Well, not required, and you know you can't do the fights yet, but still. And there's always the trolley possibility, and I like to think trolley, but there's always the trolley possibility that the Mist Dragon is in the Leviathan spot, and Rydia's mom holds a crystal. Yeah, I generally like to know if the Mist Dragon is there. The other thing you can really learn there is if you see the blue hood, that it's possibly the water hag, you can save and potentially steal a spot there. Yes, this is true. Here, we have not seen a water hag fight. We have seen Dark Knight Cecil. Uh, have we seen the King and Queen of Elben? Eblin? Not seen them yet. And by the way, there will be one boss we don't see in any given seat, so it's not a guarantee even if we see a full clear. What was in the summon box? I did not see what was in the summon box, but nothing is on the tracker, so it looks I... like it was not a key item. Yeah, I didn't see a key item there. We do see coffins for sale here at Dwarf Castle. And you've got Bacchus, which is going to be definitely useful in the Zeromas fight. A light sword, which could be somewhat valuable for Paladin Cecil. I'll be right back. It looks like Mr. Ubik is going to be picking up some coffins, which possibly useful in the grind later on. Uh, can be used against some certain uh, non-boss flag item enemies. Um, just like you're seeing Dusty use against the Baron Guard. You can use that against them and insta-kill them. Coffins do nice work. The couch just got through Vigan. By using that... Uh, Moon Veil um, to, for the Barry on Edge, Wagon couldn't touch him, and he brought Rydia back, got 23 levels for her. That is very nice. Yes, this could put, put Couch a little slightly ahead because he would be then ahead in the grind because, you know, potentially this could be your endgame party. Yeah, it also puts you, I think, just a level short of getting Virus. Yeah, Virus and Quake are some of those really nice black magic spells. Do some power and they don't have a very long charge time. I want to say they're nearly instant. Yes, this is actually pretty good for a final party. So Couch is... I would probably um, predict that Couch is going to keep this as his final party regardless of who he sees based on the levels he's gained already. Well, we'll see when we get there. There's certainly advantages to using Sid in the middle over potentially picking up Cecil, especially if you don't have that big Cecil weapon. If you don't have Excalibur, if you don't have Crystal Sword, not so inclined to pick up Cecil. If you find Fasoya, it starts to make a better case than Rydia for the final boss. Yeah, without a good weapon for Cecil, it's not it's it's really not worth worth it because he is the him being the agility anchor kind of limits you what you can do with that. Uh, without without him, you can adjust your positioning to find uh, to put agility positions in the right spot. Looks like was it the rat tail from Sheila? It was the rat tail. That is the we saw Yang item. We have the hovercraft and hook, so we can find out what that is. Yes, that could potentially be a another key item. We also still lack one of the big summons for Rydia, which unfortunately limits her pretty substantially. Even if you don't have Bahamut, if it's Leviathan, you can do a lot with that. And Ubik is doing a little bit of shopping here in, uh, in, uh, ag I want to say Agart. Down with the well. Uh, Ether 2's for sale in Land of Summit 
monsters, it wouldn't be a bad idea to pick up just a couple of those to make sure you're not going to be short of magic points. Yep. And Ubik still is is going... Oh, yeah, he's picking up the hovercraft. I forgot that it was parked there. He's Couch. going to pick up the hover... Couch Go took the look we asked for and saw Leviathan and the marionette dolls. Oh, the Calbrennis. Yeah. You bit gets the crystal sword. Well, that increases Cecil's value significantly. Yes, it does. Especially with the Avenger. Because that, with the Avenger sword, uh, you can equip that Mid battle in Zeromus or any fight, and you keep the crystal attributes, and it's an instant berserk that cannot be dispelled. Interesting that you pick still did not decide to check your deal spots while he was there. But now it looks like the dwarf castle is up next. We have access to that, we have access to to the summon monster fights which we can't defeat yet, and we have access to the Tower of Babel which has two locations that are potentially key items we haven't seen yet. We also have access to the moon, we just don't have enough firepower to actually kill much there yet. Well the Calbrenna fight in the land of the summon monsters might actually be possible uh, if you have hourglasses because you can stop those back three dolls. This is going to be Vivalis. We've already seen the elements. It's Vivalis by yourself. You Vic decides to reset out of that. If Vivalis without Kane is, a, is, is pretty tricky. Well, that leaves you with one option. Well, you could go up and uh, at least try the tower spot. The tower spot is pretty low HP. Um, so you could pretty much pick up... Uh, a free key item by running in, doing that, and then running out, you'll get a key item or a uh, powerful item equivalent. If you don't want to try to do the uh, Dr. Lugay spot. Yeah, you've got the two items here. It was the only thing, you, only place you can go at this point for Ubik. Well, Ubik actually still does have Mount Ordeals. We just already know that that's not going to lead to anything. And Ubik has not, did not peek in. I don't believe at the bosses in the land of the summon monsters. So, and he is going to try that uh, the tower, the tower spot right here. And speaking of fiends, fiendish elemental bosses, not too many HP here for King Zano. Well, Blitz might even do the job, but hey, just attack. Why not? No, I think he's. I think this is only like a five, six hundred HP spot. It, it is very low. Bill Bayonics, thank you for gifting the sub to RPG Limit Break. It's a good time to again say thank you to RPG Limit Break for hosting the Free Enterprise League tournament. Got going on here. Absolutely, and another once again thank you for JC87 for restreaming and. Uh, Golden Hades for his work on the tracker, for picking up, for him being on his game keeps the things that I miss. It is hard to watch four screens at once and talk. Now two middles for, well, there he goes, he has a ninja sword. But ninja that sword and middle. From summon monsters, so it's a very good sword. Definitely going to be happy Edge has that. Yeah, it looks like Ubik is going to go to the top of Babel here and see what, and at least peek in and see what he's got. Possibly, uh, possibly he can fight this. Possibly he's going to reset and just run back down and see what the item is. Couch and Ubik are neck and neck. Well, in terms of location. There's a high potential of this leading to something. So what got... that something is remains to be seen. This is actually a great fight 
This is a fantastic fight for this spot because you they are susceptible to status ailments and you have plenty of status ailment causing items. You could stop them and just chop them away. Well, this is one of those you actually kind of wish was at summon monsters because it'd be easy enough, even at lower levels, that you're going to be able to clear it out. Now, Couch is going to use the coffin strategy here and just take them, insta kill them. They don't do you much good in your inventory. You might as well put them to good use. Nope. And look how much faster Couch is able to clear this out. Than you can, so. No yes, but little things. I never thought to use coffins in this fight. Now I've got that in my bag of tricks for future races. Well, Ubik is also uh, going to be using life potion strategies to get a little more experience here. So those are going to be pretty welcome. Yeah, right now, any experience, it's it, this race is going to come down to uh, pretty much who can grind the most efficiently. Flashed by too fast for me, but it was that the pan? I did not see. I was watching Ubik uh, use life potions. Uh, it may have been. Uh, I'll see in just a second. Yeah, Ubik is going to get almost double the experience from this fight by using this uh, life potion strategy. And Couch did not do the tower before he did the top, so. But that will not matter since he one-shots Kanazo. The one thing Couch has done at this point that Ubik hasn't done is Mount Ordeal and also Twin Harp. But Ubik has also checked the first item from Yang's wife. Now that he has the pan, he can do the other. Yes, and Ubik finishes off and he's going to run run out after he dances a little bit with that exit door. Question in chat, has Cecil been found yet? He is not. So, I'm hesitant to try and start counting character locations. There's not him. many more options for him. He could be on the, uh, he could be after Giant of Babel. He could also be in Dwarf Castle. Sounds pretty legit to me. Oh, the uh, moon we do not have the Rosa. moon location for character lo characters. We found uh, Rosa there. We also have package locations still. We have not found the package, so that could be that could be a uh, a useful character potentially. And yeah, Ridia was oh. the clone. Ridia was on East Hobbs, and Ridia was Sand Ruby. Yeah, so we know that the remaining characters are Priscilla, Cecil, and Tella at this point. Well, we also have the twins. And the tower key yields the Drain Lance, which cannot use right now. Yeah, we have Tower of Zot for two people. We have to find the Earth Crystal to be able to, use, to recruit them. And Baron Key as well. No free lunch. Uh, other than the two you start with, you pretty much are always going to have to get into a fight to recruit people. Let's see what the uh, lists hand over to us. Okay, I'm just about to find that out. Let's see what Those he gets. Uh, that looked like the uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Geiger spear, Gunger spear. <laughs> I've learned uh, I don't even try some of these pronunciations sometimes. It's the G spear. Well, I think it's the Pew Pew spear in any event. The Pew Pew spear, I like that. All right, so they're gonna, Ubik is gonna go see what Sheila's gonna give him for this pan. It looks like Couch is gonna do the same thing. Or couch, this will be getting both items. Ubik already was here to find the first. Yeah, pick one of them is the rat tail. And Dusty has decided to go for it against the Galvrana. Which can be a really nasty fight if you do not have a way to stop those back dolls. Sees the rat tail. 
did T not hand in the pan? He had the the exit didn't work, and then I didn't see anything else to that. I saw you big handed the pan to get the Baron key, and uh, Couch's Baron key is on his tracker. So okay. Well, that gives us another location to look at. And Dusty is has silenced and charmed the Cal Brennas, um, or the cows of the Brennas, but it looks like he in their stops. So it looks like he's just going to chop away at them until they die. As long as they stay stopped. And they're going down pretty fast, so this could be a this could definitely be a swing for Dusty if this turns out to be something really good. Indeed, it certainly has the potential to be. Survey says the drain sword. I'm oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one thing. That no, that's the package. package. <laughs> so it's not a character look passion. Uh, another character location, attempting to say. And Dusty, Dusty has a, a pretty decent party at this point as well, but he may opt to uh, to give up Rydia, or he may opt to give up Sid. Sid is is it's pretty slow. You have that crystal sword in the bank if it's Cecil. You have very good weapons for Kane. Boo go is just fantastic with his magic. I think the most questionable call is if you find Tella. Because Tella sets you up for the D-Machine grind. So I think however comfortable you are with the D-Machine grind makes that decision. He's going to go peek at who the boss is in here. He sees Valvulus. I do not expect Dusty to go through with this fight. Hadn't reset yet. We check to see how it goes first. You do have Edge. How much does he have available to throw? This is true. Plus, uh, casually hitting 1k with your arrows from so a, definitely a plus. I don't know if he's equipped Rosa with the arrow, and this would be a time that would be a welcome thing. Oh, that's a nice find in uh, Baron Castle for you, Bick. The Water Hag makes things go nicely, but I think I would much rather see that fight uh, as a subterrain boss with the necessary key item. With no free lunch, we still have the normal scripts on. If it's no free lunch too, then these scripts go away and you're going to have to actually beat up the Water Hag. No free lunch too also gives a big problem if you find Dark Knight Cecil uh, somewhere later in the game because all he uses is that Dark Wave and that thing is a mess. But luckily we're only on uh, the no free lunch one flag, so we don't have to worry about that. It starts to be a question: What is Vivalis holding on to, guarding him at the moment? There's a character there. There's an item there. It looks like we have the full, full gauntlet here in Baron. That'll go pretty easy, but Couch is checking the treasures and maybe scouting or challenging the Odin spot. He is going to peek the Odin spot. It is a lunar Ooh. fight. This could be interesting. Well, there's a couple ways you can treat these D-Lunars, but they won't go into the wall and virus script unless you attack them. So if you stay away from the melee attacks, I think this is a viable fight. Yeah, those Lunar Dragons, they definitely can give you some trouble. Uh, and their magic is not anything to sneeze out. Oh, Couch has Sylph, which actually is a... No, that was a Grimoire. Grimoire, I'm sorry. Ubik will definitely finish this fight before Couch does his. 
well, I say definitely, I should never make definitive statements, they'll always betray me. Unfortunately, by the way, Z-Man, who we haven't given a lot of love to, has just had no end of trouble with this by gun fight. This is multiple attempts. He knows at this point this guards the path. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, getting hung up in a fight like this can really be a problem. Um, it's really only option for any type of grind would be to go up to ordeals and maybe fight a couple Liliths, but that's not going to make too much of a difference at this point. No guarantee of it either, because you don't have sirens to pull the fight. You just have to be hoping to counter them. And uh, Couch used a vampire on Lunar Dragons only to be betrayed by his his spell. Yeah, they, they, uh, they're quite happy to take your HP when you do that. Looks like we're about to see who the boss, I mean, who the character is from Baron after this, uh, this football gauntlet is over. What kind of HP are we looking at in the Odin spot? Odin's, yep, uh, just over 20k. Okay, so you're talking about 10,000 per dragon. That dragon breath is definitely bad. That's not what he, I, I know that's not what he wanted to see. We picked up one of the twins. Did he take the twin or dismiss them? He dismissed. He got rid of Edward. Edward went to the oh, hike. Okay, that's right. Vic is not picked up Rydia. Well, thank you very like... much, Bill. Greatly appreciate it. Hope everybody's having fun tonight. No, I'm having fun tonight. I'm having a blast. Palum, actually, yes. Palum is a good pickup. Palum, arguably. Is is a better is definitely the better black mage from Rydia because um, uh, he gets you know, his I think he levels up faster. He will get uh, certain spells faster, quake and virus particularly. Yes. Now he does pick up nuke sooner as well, but I'm not sure if that makes much of a difference with just J1 flag on. Yep. Basically, Rydia's strength is having those summons. Uh, if you had the full roster of summons, you will be the stronger black mage because of it, but otherwise, the twin will usually be better. Oh, a Bahamut from the Grimoire oh, pays off Z-Man's nice. through the fight. I bet he breathed a nice breath of relief after that one. Relief mixed with frustration. <laughs> yes. And Couch decided is, uh, I do not believe he finished the Lunar Dragon fight. Um, he is bet he went to, uh, the, the Baron fight. Yeah, that's just a tough spot if you don't have the supporting magic. I don't think Riddy is high enough level to have Quake yet. Uh, if you pick that up after this gauntlet, maybe Couch goes back in, counting on Flame and Quake. And Cure 2, for that matter. You can certainly use that against the dragons. Just don't try vampires. Right. <laughs> and who did we, what did we get from? Because Ubik is going back in to check that Odin spot. Power, power robe was the Baron Castle prize. Yeah. Okay, so it's a nice piece of equipment. It's just not a key item. Nope. So this uh, Odin spot could hold a could hold the potential answer. We also could be looking for a Mist Dragon. And we do have full access to the moon with the Dark Crystal. It's just how brave are you going to be about going there? It's a case where. If you had stone, it's a lot less scary because you can get your levels there. Oh yes. And I am personally not too familiar with any type of work done on the moon. Um, fortunately for me, every seed I've run has 
been able to avoid any type of moon grind. You have a couple strategies if you want to do the moon route, but the first couple floors, your uh, your Valkyries and your witches, they're all vulnerable to stone. And very vulnerable at that. And Dusty picked up the rat tail, turning in the pan for the Baron key, so I'm, I'm sure Bear, uh, Dusty is probably going to go for Baron at this point. not seen at this point is the leviathan item we've not seen what's in dwarf castle and we've not seen any of the moon locations we're also missing out on zot because we don't have the earth crystal right so this Thank this you. is certainly looking to be a a very long seed this is looking to be one of those seeds that you hope to not get Say that, and our very next item could be the crystal. Could be. I'm trying to jinx it, or reverse jinx reverse it. Reverse jinx it. That's it. Yes. Oh, and uh, uh, Dusty no, crashes right, into the <laughs> Dusty crashes into the mountains of uh, Silvera before deciding to go turn in his rat tail. Well, they had it coming. Ubik had a stack of cure threes and has been using that against these dealers. Yeah, just uh, yeah, 1K per per cure three. That's that's pretty nice. Getting a couple of those off, uh, and it gets Yang into this fight without attacking, which is again going to trigger the virus script, which we'd like to avoid. Yes, and we got one down, which is which really good. Um, what what hurt Couch was definitely the dragon breath that that went off, and that that was just a pain. Looks like Yang's going to just start attacking now, and. And there's breath, okay. which missed. Let's see it attack. The wall comes up. But you can still use items through that uh, wall, so she could use cure twos. But actually, does fire? Does it only go virus script if it's the two of them? This is not something I'm actually aware of. I'm not either. That's... Yeah, he walled or I think it I think it has to I think they bounce virus off each other. Okay, well I learned something new. That's just that me guessing. Happen. That's me guessing. Uh it's what it seems like that's what it looks like. Either that or Mr. Ubik is just unbelievably lucky. Question in chat if anyone has won yet, and a uh, great answer that chat wins. Chat always wins. Yeah, we we win by watching this one. But we do not have the crystal sighted yet. It is only these four runners. This is not a larger race. It is between these four. Yes, they are competing for ever so precious points in this league. And all runners except for Z-Man is their first run of the of the league. So, yes, everyone not playing this seed is the winner tonight. And the D-Liners are down, so we're about to find out what's in the Odin spot. This could be a big advantage for you, Vic. This could be a good swing for him. Blue cookie! I mean, that's... That's a location. That's bad news. <laughs> that's potential. The Luka key gives us access to the sealed cave. It is a great place to get a whole bunch of experience. And it has another key item, potentially. And another good thing about the Luka Cave is you can see the key item before you fight the boss. So if it's something that you absolutely do not need, you can just save and reset out and not even bother fighting that boss if you don't need to. It's interesting, though, in its potential for being most looks... of, if not all of, your grind for levels the trap doors mixed in with the key item check but you have to make sure you can kill that trap door before you do anything because they will wreck you very true it looks like ubik is going to at least peek at the item yeah if you leave encounters off the trap doors will not trigger and we have that choice with the e3 flag 
But can he come back and trigger those again once he's opened them? Uh, if you've opened them, no. Once the door is open, the fight is gone. So it's a good idea if you're doing this to not open, say, the treasure doors. Just go exactly the minimum. Yes. And it looks like, uh, oh, he's going to actually fight it. He's right at the start. Quick to check. By edge. This will be got through Vivalis and found Cecil. So Cecil is level one with a crystal sword and an easy fight with King and Queen. Yes. And I like that at this point because it's such a big damage increase. We really don't have a weapon for Sid. If you had Runax, we'd, it'd make a little more sense. Right, yes, and Cecil is now level 25 with his Crystal Sword. And you also have the Avenger, so you can you can keep him berserked uh, in the Zeromus fight without worrying about getting dispelled by Black Hole. Did you pick out that trapdoor down. We'll at least have Virus and Quake now with Palom. And we're going to find out what Couch gets from from Dwarf Castle. I mean, right now, this could one major play could swing this in any runner's favor. It is the Pink Tail, so not a required item, but it'll give you an adamant armor. It's a nice pickup. It's obviously the best armor in the game, but it does not get you closer to being quite lost. I think he's going to go take advantage of turning that pink tail in, just so he can have a little more survivability in some of these fights. Oh, I do believe that also. Other than Leviathan, as far as our knowledge goes, watching means we are looking at crystal being on the moon or locked behind something that's on the moon right you do have a small potential of mist dragon still in one of the two locations we could get to but haven't seen the only other op only other possibility is it's on in luka cave that's which true. so ubik has a chance to find it before anybody ubik's getting a little bit of his grind done here too gonna go ahead and turn encounters back off and I think he's just gonna roll right now with this to to see what he's got question in chat did they go to fight the vanilla mist dragon spot they've not done that and they've not done the octomon spot so we do have those as potential mist dragon locations that have not been checked right and uh, looks like couch is gonna go try Bahamut so interesting play Couch has been able to get levels still a little low level, I would say, this spot. Yes, there is always a possibility that Miss Dragon could be on the Giant of Babel. As I've seen in Wait. chat. That could be a lot of HP. That could. That's a uh, 93,000 spot. And just so you all know, I do not know this off the top of my head. Um, I am I have a chart <laughs> of all the HP next to me. You don't have to admit that. No one was I, putting you under the hot lights. I keep things honest. No, um, no, it's good. But but definitely, if uh, any of you who are a part of the free enterprise community, check out in the Discord in the guides and resources. There are phenomenal guides. For, uh, everything in there is amazing. Uh, even if you know nothing about this randomizer. Um, oh, oh my. <laughs> yep. Good luck, Couch. <laughs> Actually, never mind. Rip, Couch. Yep, and Wyburn Flag is off, so he will open with me every time. Couch is going to go try again. Or was there treasure that he wanted? It could be treasure. Oh, he's going to use the Cursed Ring on Cecil to nerf, at least to attempt to nerf, the speed of Wyatt Ring. 
If you're able to get Star Veils off, that's a completely different story. Oh, yeah. Uh, however, he does then cast Wall on himself and start bouncing Nuke off onto you, so... Well, how many HP do you have to deal to, to the Bahamut spot? It's all, all going to come down to uh, his run buffering, and if he can get those uh, st enough Star Veils up. But how many HP does he have to do? He's going to get one. Oh! Bahamut spot is going to be 37,000 HP. Well, you only need 31,000 more. Yep. And here comes some nuke bouncing. And he's going to do his best to revive as much as possible. Yeah, well, so he's, he's going to get got a lot of life potions, and if you have enough speed, you don't actually have to worry about healing here cuz it doesn't matter anyways. But no, not enough speed, and that's what Couch found. He tested the waters. If you're able to get two life potions off in between nukes, then you could still possibly make something happen. But, uh, yes, and we're not, and we're not for sure. We are not for sure that that is not a necessary spot. So we may have, we may be coming back for this. So it looks like Couch is going to try some lunar subterrain bosses now. advantage to doing this is theoretically there's more locations here now than anywhere else in the game. So you're more likely to find crystal here than anywhere else. Oh, uh, Mr. Ubik is probably not happy. Well, the spoon with edge is not a bad thing. Plus, what if this is the best trick? There, you know, can't land, whatever. Yeah, um, Antline can give you some problems, too. Oh, Please. boy. Oh, that's not where you want to see Plague. There aren't many places I want to see Plague. Oh, we're gonna, he's going to go with strategies trying to kill his party members with coffins to bring them back up to reset this stuff. He's also got a wall on... Now. So this resets the. Oh! So he has. Does this actually cause the countdown on him as well? Question about my pay grade, but. Gotcha's just sitting on it. Yes, yes it does. Fair enough. See, this is part of what makes Couch so good, is knowing little mechanics like that. Yes, yeah, so this is going to make a be, be a big difference here. Um, getting Edge up, he'll count down, and uh, you know he'll have this fight won. Heart, heart beating a little faster, but this fight will be won. Unfortunately, this is re. Did that just not work out right? Though? I think it did not, because I believe it just reset the count on Plague. Now he's. I think he's got it. I think Plague is going to be one count lower. Yeah. Yep. He's going to head in count now, but when he did that wall again, he reset the count on Plague. But we don't have any more walls up. Although he just used another yeah. Star Veil. Well, which I'm not 100% sure why. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't know the strategy here. But, couch is couch, we'll see how it goes. Ubik, meanwhile, is through the antlion fight and on the way out of here. As uh, Knight Dew pointed out, he hot swapped the Avenger on, so the. Uh... He's got Bacchus. He's he's getting attacks off too while all this is going down. Um, he's got everybody up, berserked, and oh, I see what he's doing. 
So he's got Rosa with a Star Veil on and everybody up berserked. And uh, he will continue to cast Count and into, because Rosa doesn't have it on while he attacks Plague. That'll certainly work. Anything make... that uh, will cause Plague to reset on your party will work. Yes. Yeah, Couch is, is really handling this Plague fight really well. And this is the reason why Couch is in the league. Well, now, we still don't know if this fight is going to be required or not, but... It's nice to get it out of the way. It's also going to be a huge chunk of experience. Yes. I'm sure he's... Yeah, wow. 59,000. And wow. the Earth Crystal. There we go. Double-edged sword. <laughs> Do you take that bait? Because it's two characters... One of which could be Pasoya or Tella, thus give you access to the grind fight. It also I mean, has a key item. Essentially, he can plow with with the levels he's at and the items he has. He can plow through Zot without even worrying about anything. Because we know it's not Wyvern, we know it's not Golbez. He'll be fine. I'm uh, I'm not even sure what the trolliest thing we could see at this point would be maybe CPU in the element spot. But even even that, uh, going up Zot, CPU in uh, the Magus sister spot is going to be nothing. And Couch is going to go, Couch is going back down. Couch just healed up. He's going in. Okay. You're here. It still does have more locations than anywhere else. Dusty is taking on the, uh... Dusty's picking up Cecil, it looks like. Uh, looks like he's thinking about who he's gonna drop. It's got to sit. He just doesn't have reason to be in this party. You're gonna bring Cecil. Okay, make a liar out of me. Yeah, that's... Okay, that's an interesting play. Surrendering black magic to have four melee damagers, but... Sid just doesn't have a weapon right Yeah, it just it depends on how you want to play your uh, end party. Maybe he's hoping to pick somebody else up later. Uh, Z-Man just finished Babel, so he is... It's like he's going to go check the Yang spot. Well, chat, you still have plenty of time to get your guesses in. Where do you think this crystal is hiding at? Is it on the moon? You got Zod as a possibility. So those are all possibilities now. Yeah, we still got the pass mixed in this key item stuff too, so... I mean, the pass is an unnecessary key item at this point, but it also is very useful. And Leviathan. We've not seen Leviathan either. Right. It's our first look. I think the question is, where do you think the crystal is? How about... <laughs> How about Rydia's mom? Let's that's, go with that. That's exactly what I'm thinking, and there we see the Demas. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so this, this is... This is where I think the decision-making gets really interesting for Couch. Now we're looking at not just one location back on Earth that we can check. We've now got two of them. And which spot is this that he is checking? Who is... Who is here vanilla? I think this is the crystal sword. Which is which boss? Uh, that be Wyvern? Is it Wyvern? Uh, if that's it, it's 25,000. Yeah. So, with his damage he's outputting, I don't think he's going to have a problem with it. Now, using... Not attacking the, uh, the mist might be an issue. But... It doesn't damage too much. The crystal sword is wider, and Agapogo is the white spear. Well, somebody says this must be. No, that could be too. I don't remember everything. <laughs> what happens when you try to do everything from memory? You forget stuff. 
See, I generally don't. I'm, as I said before, I'm not too familiar with the Luna Subterrain bosses because I generally don't go that way. The only time I'll fight them is if I'm playing a vanilla game of Final Fantasy IV. And Couch, uh, Couch using his Berserks on his characters definitely is, is making this fight take quite a bit longer. Looks like the Leviathan fight going pretty smoothly here, so hopefully we're soon to get a look at what's there. Yes, we haven't actually seen this yet, have we? Now this is our first look. We saw the dolls taken on. That was in the insurance sure higher level now. Remember, Ubik actually was in Summon Monsters' first of our runners, but ducked out of here after just checking the treasure chest. He did. And Ubik also has not done ordeals, I don't believe, has he? Has not. Didn't get the twin heart. So now we're gonna see what this is. It's the pass. The pass. Well, totally good news, bad news. <laughs> but if he finds it not on the moon, he doesn't have to go back and do that run. Well, this also means there is no way to get the crystal other than via the moon. Either it's yeah. on the moon, or you needed the Earth crystal, or to be the deepness. I'm still, I'm still betting on Rydia's mom. Where this could be an advantage for you, Big, is if actually it is the Earth crystal. Because if it is the Earth crystal, you've got to come back there, and then you've got the pass to get back is even faster. Right. I don't think anybody else is going to go back to that Leviathan spot. No, I don't think they are. I think uh, Couch is pretty much bent on doing some moon fights here. Uh, now, I would imagine he's probably going to go check Rydia's mom as soon as this fight's over if it is not the crystal. Question in chat. Did Couch do ordeals? Yes, everybody has done ordeals except for Ubik. Now, Mr. Ubik took the hook and went that path, assuming that was the path to get to the subworld. That gamble paid off, but that also means that Ubik has not seen the Mount Ordeal item or the Twin Harp item. And Ubik is choosing to throw his spoon at Valvulus when he's going to find. Dark Knight Cecil. Now, what did uh, what did the Demis spot give him? I was watching Ubik throw a spoon at a feed. It was a defense sword. Okay. So I would imagine he's going to go check Rydia's mom at this point. Yeah. What I like about throwing the spoon there is you're able to check the spot. He's safe first, so you can reset out of here if you don't like what you get. Right. And you've got the spoon back. So it's a great play. Yes, everyone who has the Twin Harp has done the cave. Or the uh, Cave Magnus. And Couch is still, he's still digging deeper into the, uh, into the Lunar Sub Trade. Now, one of the advantages to him doing this is Couch is probably not going to have to grind after this. Uh, if he does, it'll be very little. You'll get so much experience from these bosses, it'll be okay. The song for the Cave Magnus was uh, a wonderful rendition of Megalovate. Well, this is an interesting little spot for Mob Bomb to be at. Yes, and he's going to swap out the Avenger Sword, and whoa, he hits hard. <laughs> That's the thing about some of these early bosses, is when they're on the moon, they can really scale up in their stats and be a lot more threatening than you'd expect. They sure can. So yeah, I think it looks like Couch is going to clear out as much as he possibly can up here on the moon before... He is forced to go back down. Now, this the Wyvern. No, Wyvern's still there. Um, laughing. The 
Survivor of the Bahamut spot is not a fun spot. At least that one is standalone, so it's not like you have to walk through the rest of the Lunar Subterranean to get there. That's the one thing you can say for it. Right, and Couch Down's Mom Bomb, so we're gonna see what he picks up from this. A little pick... easier to kill Mom Bomb in Phase 2. Yes! Hey, there you go, Rydia. Have Leviathan now that it's not much use. <laughs> uh, he ditched Rydia a while back, too. He did. Uh, you picked up his adamant armor, so it looks like he's probably going the same route as Couch. He's going to go check out some moon battles. And that's exactly what he's doing. I would imagine he's going to run down, see Bahamut slash Wyvern, and uh, say a couple things that we could keep off of this family-friendly stream. You know if if you big reset out of dwarf, then you still will have a spoon. To play, which is a much different position to be at when you've got a third of the damage or so. He does, that knocks off uh, just about 10k at that 25k spot. So like getting a. More like uh, 40%. Yeah, getting a star veil up. So that's going to get. 10,000 plus another 7,000, so he's be 17,000 down to that 25k. So if he plays it right, we're he saying do it. there's a chance. He could do it. Now, I, I'm gonna imagine I'm probably going to reset in just a moment. Because no one expects this. We depend on the that you have if you have small days. Well, yeah. can't get it up fast enough, so... Of course, he's got the... his party's order wrong, actually. He needs to have Sid in the middle. Well, maybe he'll change that here. No? No? Bueller? No? No, I think he's just gonna say, nope. Oh, it looks like we got Pale Dim. Uh, for Couch. In the, uh... Is that the drag... the Looter Dragon spot? Uh, I thought it was the plague spot with the ribbons. Oh, then it, then yes. So that's only 20, 28,000 here, so... Nothing too bad. And Pell Dim is really not too tricky of a boss. Okay, you attack, you get slowed, you don't cast an elemental spell. Yeah, you'll, yeah he'll be fine with this. Uh, I'm sure Couch is probably pretty happy about seeing this right here. You'd rather have Nuke. You can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you might find you'll get what you need. Or you get the Adamant. <laughs> which would give you Excalibur, which would give you one more thing you could throw, but you probably won't turn it into. Could give you access to another shop, though. Could be. Yes, uh... Good point, Couch got super lucky when he wiped to, uh... The Lunar Dragons. You may not see it that way. Yeah, Couch's grind is pretty much done. Um... He'll be fine, and Ubik is... Muttering some choice words under his breath, I'm sure. A ribbon! Which, not random enough. No. <laughs> also an but, Excalibur, so now we don't have to worry about uh, forging one. We still have one to throw. Alright. All the choices for Cecil. Looks like Z-Man has finished off uh, Baron proper. Now I don't think he's done the Odin spot yet. Yeah, someone asked if he was duping, and no, this uh, this has the the G flag on, which is the, turns off most of the major glitches, such as the uh, item underflow, the MP underflow. You cannot warp from the Dwarf Castle throne room into the Crystal Room to get the Dark Crystal spot. Um, but some glitches are still a uh, available 
Oh, CPU in the Ogopogo spot. Um, but some glitches are still available, such as the uh, equipping the Avenger Sword will keep the, the the attributes of what you swapped it out for in the fight. You can also place Cecil in the back row uh, with a bow, and then equip him with the sword and he'll still have it he'll attack like he's in the front row so those type of glitches are still available in uh in this but major glitches are off so couch makes very good use of that excalibur throws it at the cpu we have estimated time and at this point yes that is the answer <laughs> we are actually getting a lot closer because there's not many locations left after the cpu so Couch is going to give us our best picture. We'll have Bahamut left after this that we've not seen. We have the Earth Crystal item we've not seen. That's pretty much it. And we also haven't checked yet. I believe you just said we haven't checked Rydia's mom. Yeah, that would be the other one. We've not checked Rydia's mom. We found the Mist Dragon. We did. So that is, that is there. Um, and I'm very surprised that uh, Ubik is not going straight to Earth Crystal because that is, I mean, that would be pretty much a free clear out. Uh, but I think he's he's doing just like Couch is doing and trying to get as much done down here as possible. And uh, Dusty is grinding on uh, trap doors, but his party is pretty pretty beefy right now. There is also the idea that there's more locations on the moon here, so one would think at first glance that it's more likely for the crystal to be here. Counterpoint is it's not actually an even distribution chance. It's more likely that the key items are going to be in specific locations than in random locations. I don't know the particulars of that, I just know that it is. But uh, that would lead me to think that something like Earth Crystal or Lydia's mom is more likely to have the crystal than a spot on the moon. And uh, Z-Man has gone back to fight Valvolus. I believe he checked her a second ago. Or uh, not a second. What seems like a second ago, but wasn't. Um, and reset out. But I think he's going to see where this goes. There's the adamant. You could make an Excalibur. Yes. Well, do we have the Legend Sword, though? Oh, you're right. Okay. So we've got Legend Sword we haven't seen, Magma Key we haven't seen, and Crystal. So between Rydia's mom, the Earth Crystal, and... What's our... Bahamut. Yes. For those three items. And Ubik is fighting that B-Miss now. Uh, I think, yeah, Couch is... Well, he's he's going to go... Give Muhammad last at this point. Yep. He is, uh, I'm, he's probably going to check Rydia's mom, and I would imagine that is definitely the the right play, because you don't want to do That's the... fastest the location of the three we can check. You don't want to do Zot, only to find out you could have just walked into mist and gotten... Let's see what uh, let's see what this gives. <laughs> Vic has found the D mist, so now we'll have that choice of do you take the Earth Crystal and D mist as bait to go back to Earth? And, Which, and per personally, I, thing. I would. If you're trying to outthink the room, you could look at the IRC and say nobody's done. Yes. You think somebody else has been on the moon, and if so, the no there it is. All right. Crystal was ready as mom. <laughs> so, to uh, what I was gonna say is, it might lead you to think that it's more likely to be with ready as mom or Earth Crystal. So Couch is in a great position here. I think he's checking Cecil's agility to see if that there might be anything worth doing there. He does have a cursed ring, so he can 
manipulate that a little bit if he wants. I think we also have Dream Sword in the bank. I believe we picked one up and it would make a lot of sense to keep that just in case. I think it was a Drain Lance. I know we got a Drain Lance. I think we got a Drain Sword later. He's going to give the Adamant Armor to Edge. I'm a fan of that. Yes, that that, that is good. <laughs> uh, and, you know, if you can nerf Big Bangs effectively, you know, generally I like to have my my white mage over 2k but if you can nerf big bangs effectively it's not 100% necessary now I'm not 100 oh yeah well I was about to say we, I'm not sure what couch is doing have, real but quick, we definitely have our answer on what Mr. Yupik is going to do because you would have cast exit if you would go back to her so that definitely tells us the strategy there yeah. that means yes. this is now couch is to win or lose yes I was actually wondering what couch was doing but and I realize he does not have the pass. So he has to go to, uh, he has to make the run. Now, if you Bic were to, was to leave, check Rydia's mom, get that crystal, he's right there. In fact, he could, if he exited right now, check Rydia's mom, I think he could still get to Zemus faster. Yes. Yes, that, that is that would be the uh, potential of a nice snipe because his character is his characters are in good shape. They're fine. But just the fact that he didn't exit right away after the D missed tips the hand because that's the time to do it. You don't come do these other fights if that's your strategy. Right. I'm sure he will, probably wants his palm to get a little higher up. But you got three decent attackers. Um, Sid still doesn't have anything great. Or does he? Did he equip something to Sid that I have not that I did not see? I think we saw a poison axe picked up somewhere. Also, he has that cursed ring. How low could he potentially get Sid's agility for Zoramas would be an interesting question. Right. You could hit that 14, that'd be sweet. Oh, that 14 would be wonderful. The worst you want, the worst thing is one below that 14 multiple spot. So if you are one under, like if you're 13, that's the worst you can get. If you're 27, that's the worst you can get. It's not as bad being one over, one under is not. Well, we kind of put a lot of attention on the couch and you because they've been up at the front. So it's understandable, but we've got Dusty now. Taking on the Leviathan spot makes perfect sense that you do that before going to the moon. And it looks like Z-Man is going to turn in at least one of the tails, if not both. And Ubik had a pretty easy time with Mom Bomb there. Gouch just quickly running through the moon. It's not that bad. When you don't have to take any fights. It does stink a little bit how far the save point is from the final boss, though. Well, that's only if he has a bad time with it. Yeah, true, as long as you beat it, and uh, Cash is very much a veteran and very well prepared to handle a variety of fights in this surrounding location. Now, if you've never seen Free Enterprise before, you're about to see one of the best features of the game. Jack, can we get some hype in here? We've got Couch about to go against the final boss. Let's get some hype for a Couch going for here. Dusty is rewarded with the pass. Anybody want to throw in some guesses on what this sprite might be? Scala Kitty has put way too many sprites in here, and Ford Face put a lot in before that, so I have no idea. Yeah, this and the uh, this and the Edward song are two of my favorite features. I am without words. Wow. <laughs> I have never seen that one before.
All right, so uh, you want to talk a little bit about what Couch has to do here? Yep, Couch has got to get through. Um, obviously, he's going to slow um, Zeromus. Any magic against Zeromus is is going to trigger a counter nuke. Uh, he can try to nerf his Big Bang. So the first Big Bang is a, is a free nerf. Uh, but following the, if, and correct me if I'm mistaken, because so, the Zeromus fight is not my my major strong suit but um a magical attack will nerf that following that uh he will shake and attacking him following the shake will counter will trigger a counter nuke but it will also lower his magic attack so his big bang will be uh significantly weaker as you saw on couches um the only difference is if you push phase you'll get a full powered big bang um, so he's going to be waiting for this shake. Now he did slow him, so that might uh, that might change up some of the timing here as well. And uh, Dusty is is fighting Wyvern. Well, Dusty's got a spoon. That's one thing I can say about it. He's also got Crystal Sword to Avenger, so that's not bad. Yeah, we got. Yeah, he's. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what this gives. Yeah, Cecil's hitting a good 52k, uh, 5200 per uh, per attack. Keep this, him alive. Yeah, this should be uh, a pretty quick fight for for Couch. Speed is just much different here. You're able to get attacks off. Wyvern's not killing people too fast. It's a much different battle. Meanwhile, Z-Man is checking out some monsters. Not going to be terribly pleased with the results there. Still, I like to play on Z-Man's part because you're figuring with the Darkness Crystal, more people have probably gone to the moon. And since no one's done yet, you're probably starting to think that the Crystal's not on the moon. So checking out the summon monsters first makes a lot of sense from that perspective. Well, see, that was a fully powered Big Bang, which which took out Palum, but uh, he should not have a problem with these uh, with these next um, with just these four. And he's in the Medio phase. When you see Medio, that means he is almost dead. That's his final phase, and that is. A very weak spell that can completely miss, uh, and if it does hit, it doesn't do too big a damage. So, um, and that's uh, that is dot done for couch. One fifty three fifty eight, definitely a uh, good time on this seed. Yeah, that was the seed may not have been a good time, but the finish was a good time. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, he he made quick work of Zeromus there. Just by his damage output, so um, he utilized that glitch I was talking about with uh, hot swapping Avenger Sword for the Crystal. It kept the attributes of his Crystal Sword while uh, putting Cecil in a permanent Berserk state. Black Hole will wipe off the Berserk status uh, if used by Bacchus or the actual Berserk spell, but it will not affect the Avenger Sword. So. Uh, so, so, Couch, so how much were you away. hoping that uh, Wyvern wasn't guarding? Uh... <laughs> I was about to uh, be pretty ragey if that was a uh, if that was the situation. How about this one? It just took you for a trip. Oh, it did. This was a. Uh... It was fun. That's that's the thing, though. It was fun. We certainly had a blast watching you play it. <laughs> Better, better you than me playing that oh, yeah, scene. Definitely. <laughs> a couple locations I was for sure I was going to die in, but I happened to get lucky and just pull it out. <laughs> now, can you can you tell me what made you decide to clear the moon uh, as opposed to running down and trying out Earth Crystal? Because you could have plowed through Earth uh, Zot pretty quickly. I figured I was already on the moon, and it's good experience up there. I might as well get the levels and take out the bosses. Like... I mean, that's about really all I can say. Like, <laughs> I, if 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 you're on the moon and you we've already knocked out two bosses, might as well just finish up the rest of the bosses, get the experience, and then go wipe out everything else if you don't find it up there. 
Well, I was uh, particularly floored and impressed by how you handled that plague fight. That was that was like a dance. That was awesome. <laughs> I was just trying to get a star veil up on somebody after they got back up. That's usually my strat, is trying to get uh, that count reflected, and then once that happens, it's just a free fight. Pulled that off. This had some interesting fights. You had to get past that plague. There was also, of course, Bygone at the Rubicon spot. Oh yeah, that was <laughs> that was that was a close one that I thought I was gonna die on. We didn't see too many of the J items. Uh, did that cause any differences in your strategy? Uh, a little bit. Guy drums or anything? I mean, like guy drums and everything like that is really only useful for me early on. Um, that was more looking for like coffins and uh, Bacchus wines and stuff like that. That's that's kind of like what I look out for when I go shopping. Now, looking back, are you uh, are you glad that you didn't spend a whole bunch of time trying to fight those uh, dragon mists in the Odin spot? Yeah, uh, as soon as I died, I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen for at least a while. And then I was just like, I'm, I'm out of here. I didn't have the team capable of beating them that early. I didn't even write down what they have. I don't think it was just a generic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't even remember what they had. It wasn't anything useful. Uh, it says Luka Key. Oh, maybe it was Luka Key. <laughs> yeah, and that didn't lead to anything. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely an interesting seat. I had fun with it, though. It was definitely really well, very well played. It was very enjoyable to watch. I learned some things from your from your run. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, chat pointing out that the Luka key, key did lead to the spoon, so that is something. Oh. I mean, oh. yeah, spoon would have been like okay for some of the boss fights, um, but usually, like if I have Edge and especially with Adam and armor on, he's just getting berserked and going at it. Cook and Darkness Crystal, this was a quick to give you some character seed. Yeah, but I was. Never got Tella or food. That's exactly. I was actually hoping to find food at some point because I was thinking I might have to go do the grind fight, and I I hate trying to get somebody grind before they. Because uh, I think like Palum gets it at like late 40s and I know Iridia gets it at like I think early 40s or something like that it's pretty ridiculous well, Fu would have been uh, not Fu Tella was the first one at Earth Crystals so oh, Fu would have either okay. had to have been the second there or a giant of Babel or Packard <laughs> so what are you thinking looking forward to the other races you've got Couch oh, I'm excited for all of them Especially if we get, if, especially if seeds are like this for like the rest of them, it's. I, I like a challenge seed. Like, it, it gets me. It's my gets my blood pumping. Checking, checking over it. Uh, SRL, seeing if anybody's not done yet. Yeah, this def <laughs> def definitely was a challenge seed. Uh, I mean, there was, it, it, there was never really a clear advantage until you pulled ahead there at the very end with that moon play. Um, it was very close for a long time. Oh wow. So for that's, people that's, watching that's tonight, good. people watching tonight who want to see more, we have on RPG Limit Break tomorrow at eight, six o'clock Eastern, eighteen hundred hours. Uh, that'll be the next matchup of the league. We've got Invariable Muppets in Space in that, along with Tasia and Obajar. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce all these, so I'm playing it on the fly. But that's yep. I think six o'clock cool. tomorrow night. Yes, you get to hear my wonderful voice again tomorrow night. So if that if that keeps you from coming, just pretend I'm not here. But I'll be here tomorrow night as well. We've got races. A lot of races in the next few days. Through the 7th, we've got... I think it is 7 races, so... In the next 4 days, 7 races here on RPG Limit Break. I think they'll all be on RPG Limit Break. I'm actually not sure. But, uh... Let's guess this. Tomorrow night is tomorrow night is definitely on RPG limit break, um, and I think most, as you said before, I believe most of them are. So hope you'll be back for more. It's been a lot of fun, and we have Mister Ubik 
onto the bike. What'd you think of the sprite, Couch? Oh, I loved it. I, I love all the sprites. I, I was actually really ecstatic when I heard the Twin Heart music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting, I'm just sitting here in my seat dancing. <laughs> Uh, Megalovania is definitely one of my favorite video game soundtracks. Dustin yes. has now found the D-Mist, which we know leads to the crystal. And it's funny that a lot of those, uh, you know, Megalovania from that soundtrack, a lot of that inspiration was drawn from a lot of these old RPGs, you know, Earthbound, Final Fantasy, things like that. So um, it's kind of cool how it ties in with it. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. I'm curious if we'll see between our remaining two runners if any of them will take the bait of Earth Crystal and Mist Dragon to lead. Yeah, I'm wondering if Dusty will choose to do that. Uh, looks like Z-Man's getting ready to come uh, have a bad time with uh, Wyvern. Well, Catch, any other thoughts on this one you want to share? Um, not really. I mean, Steve pretty much explained itself the whole time. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, a lot of many, too many decisions to make at any one time. Yeah. I want to, I'd like to ask you, what, uh, what do you think about the, the changes in flags from the qualifier rounds? You know, I, I actually, uh, I don't like T4. It's like here you, you find an adamant and you're just like oh okay I, I can go through the whole game like really quick I, I, I like looking at my gear and going okay I can put this on this person to prep for this fight and then I can do this instead of doing this and kind of change my gear around instead of just being like oh okay three people have adamant armor we're fine we don't have to worry about anything um, I like having shops being lower um, I, I, I like a challenge when I play a seed. Like, I don't like something that's like, okay, I'm gonna beat it in like 45 minutes. I want, I want something kind of like this seed where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to think about what I'm doing in a fight instead of just holding A or something like that. Z-Man is on the Wyvern fight, having a much better fight here. Got two walls before the Mega Nuke came out, so yeah, Z-Man already 10k damage in. Yeah, Z-Man's actually doing doing a lot better than than I expected he would have with this initially. Normally that initial shock of seeing Wyvern is like, oh crap, and get enough off. And... <laughs> Sid goes down. Like I was saying earlier, the, the one nice thing is you know you don't have to heal in this fight because it doesn't matter anyways. Oh, and Mr. Ubik used a nice, a well-timed white. I don't know, did he reflect it or did he use it just to push phase? That's a full power Big Bang, though. Yep. Because yeah, normally, White, yeah, I think he, he wall bounced it off of Pal. Because <clears throat> normally, Wall will, uh, not White, will trigger a weak counter. Uh, and, by the way, uh, there was a question in chat about if you get to choose your party. Uh, once you have five members, anytime somebody wants to join, you can choose either to take them and replace somebody in your party or leave the person who wants to join behind. So they do have some choice, but you have to find the person for them to be able to join. Although if you do want a nice challenge, you can set the, I want to say, what is it, C3 on? Uh, C3 means you get those five periods. And that's the only characters that you that you can see. So you'll see lots of duplicates. And uh, Wyvern is is casting some remedies on himself. And then back comes the wall. Did we see uh, did we see anybody defeat Wyvern? Yes, I think. I think Dusty did it. The dusty or you did? I'm pretty sure we did because they were doing very good melee damage. Life staff, someone, yeah, okay. Life staff was the reward. 
All right. Well, there you go. I can half remember things. Oh. Chat. Still, this is this is going Chat. very well for Z Man. It's slow, but it's getting there. Well, Chat's helped me out a lot too. Oh, he took out Dusty. Took out Mom Bomb before. Uh, he even got a uh, got the change. Phase two. Yeah, that's a very impressive amount of damage. You've got spot plus 10k damage there, so. Oh du yeah, well, Dusty uh, is Dusty is set up with. Uh, you know his his party is ready. He just needs to find the crystal. The levels and are very high, so <laughs> the agility is not going to be set up great, but. There's a thing which you just have to not worry about that and just worry about doing as much damage as you can. Right, and if he has the pass, I mean, he does have the pass, so if he goes and uh, checks that Mist Dragon spot, but he is going to clean the moon out. Uh, looks like Ubik is actually playing at a lower game speed, which allows for inputs and better controls, so nothing and wrong that's... with doing that. Yeah, that's definitely a good strategy sometime if you want to make sure that you have... If you got a tricky fight coming up, that you really need to make sure that you're making the right calls, because Sid is not doing a lot of damage at all at this point for him. And uh, he has just finished the fight. So... It's GG to Mr. Ubik. Finishes with the time of 2.07.30. Uh, Couch, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We appreciate yeah, it. thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, thank you. Ubik in here shortly. So a very hype race. Two of our four runners finished. Dusty has access to the crystal, just doesn't know it yet. Z Man still has to actually get to the D Nest first. Yes, he just needs to go check it out. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Z-Man decides to go check um, it once he, get, once he finds Mist Dragon or go check Earth. Uh, because as you said before, you might be able to pop, pop into IRC and see that there are a couple finished. And he may say, oh, hey, maybe it was that. And there's Mr. Ubik. Thank you for joining us. Though the mic has to work first. Uh, can't hear us. All right, I'll just type out a question here. Let's see. Who cannot hear us? Uh, Mr. Yubei could not hear us, so oh. I'll just ask him to uh, talk for a minute, and then we'll go on based on that. Plague fight for Zeman. Yes. He's going to take that, and he's going to do the same strategy that we saw Couch do. Uh, very... Oh, no, he... Well, yeah, he took him out, so... That is a, uh... Yeah, that's tricky. Um... That is a very tricky fight. Uh, you bet you still have your microphone muted. I think he can hear us now. Alright, well, we'll come back to that in a minute. Z-Man getting through the plague fight now. We'll go to the other side and start getting that much closer to the Mist Dragon. Yep, and uh, Z-Man looks like he's gonna go just clear out the moon as well. Or, no, oh yeah, he is. Okay. I thought he was heading for the exit, but a smarter play would be use exit spell. I always forget about the exit spell. Exit will get you out of the moon very quickly. Uh, you do have to be in this surface instead of the crystallized surface. But uh, it'll get you out of here very quickly. So this is a good time to again say thank you to RPG Limit Break for uh, partnering with us with everything and hosting us tonight. Also JC for being a great restreamer for us. It's so appreciated. And Golden Hades for fantastic tracking. 
it is a lot to keep up with when you're watching four streams at once. It is. I can barely keep up with it and not click a tracker, so I can't can't imagine. So that's that's impressive. All right. Well, it looks like uh, technical difficulties are going to pre prevent us from getting words from Mr. G Victim. But uh, we'll say uh, GG to him. Did a fantastic job. Yes, Probably definitely. Through that uh, bygone fight actually was the first one to get through it. Yeah, that was. Yeah, he he persisted through that one. That was a uh, that definitely was a tricky one for him. Um, but he but he pulled it off, and you know, really for a while it looked like he was gonna pull pull ahead several times because he did make the right play early on by going down into the underground so he never did ordeals which or the twin harp cave which would have wasted a lot which wasted a lot more time and well, we have it's we know at this point it's gonna take the runners going back to Earth first, but by the time you fight D Mist, I fully understand why they just go ahead and finish the moon. Yeah. There's not that many bosses, and it would take you more time to double back and clear them out than it would to just finish off. Yeah, totally understandable doing that. I mean, it is definitely not, it, it's not the safer play. But when you're in the league in a, in a match like this, you the risk, high risks sometimes can yield high rewards. And Z-Man's going to finish off Pale Dim shortly. Well, it's unmuted now. I'm not going to worry too much about that. But uh, again, thank you to all of you who have spent your evenings with us tonight. A uh, great crowd has turned out to enjoy this free enterprise race. And this was a bit longer one than we put on. But yeah, I this was, it was worth it. Significantly longer than I expected this race to go, but um, it was definitely fun. It kind of kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. Can you hear me now? Oh, we can! Yes. <laughs> I'm too loud. I had to restart Discord. Uh, of course, that's the solution to many things. Turn it off and back on again. That's how it works, right? Tins and for commentating and tracking and restreaming. Hey, thank you for racing. Not a problem. It was fun. I had no idea where I was, obviously, until I saw the couch had finished, and I figured I was still doing the right things being on the moon, so... What stood out to you about this one? Very, very slow fights. So that I almost can fight. I heard you talking about it. I, I knew I had the moon veil, so I figured I could get one person to survive all the way through the fight. It would just take a very long time to do the damage needed. And that did work out. Couch had a bit faster fight because he had more levels. And yeah. Dusty picks up the crystal and with the pass is going to be able to get back a little faster. I was uh, particularly impressed with your persistence through that bike and fight. It was that was a pain. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few fights like that CPU in weird spots where it just feels like I might as well just get through it because I'm here already uh, and I know I can get all the way to the end of the fight even if it takes you know 15 minutes unfortunately. So about the only decision that was left at the end is if you think it was worth it to go for any party member changes. Since two of the four were going to be at Earth Crystal, is there any thought to that or you're just going to go ahead and finish with who you got? Uh, once I decided to commit to doing those doors that I did in Luca Cave, I just figured I was going to stick with that party. Unless maybe Fu showed up and then I probably would have swapped Palum for Fu. We don't know where Fu was. We only know Tella. Don't want Tella him. <laughs> <Earth Crystal. laughs> 
I mean, if I had gotten him earlier, maybe D-Machine Grind instead of trying to split it, but with all the bosses I had to kill on the moon, I didn't really need the levels anyway. Yeah, we really didn't see much of uh, anybody grind in this just because of how the seed laid out, other than a couple, we saw a couple people run the uh, trap doors, so. The only one, I guess, although uh, in the end, it probably wasn't all that necessary. I don't know. Well, I mean, whatever you do, you want it to have a chance to work, and that certainly did, because if nobody else had gone there and that had been the crystal, then this was yours by a mile. That is also true. I was like, I might as well check out what's in there and, and spend some time uh, on the doors to get the levels in case it's a trickier boss. Now, I asked, uh, I asked Couch this, but I, I'll ask you too. What do you think about the changes of the, the flag sets from the league qualifiers to these league, league races now? And I mean, the, the variance is what kills me. I mean, you could have a jet seed where you're done the same amount of time as the qualifier flags, or you have one like this where, you know, it's two hours plus before you're, you're figuring out what you what, what you have left even to go check because you've got to clear all those moon bosses and that just takes time. Uh, the lack of overpowered stuff just all over the place, it makes uh, like the, the little bit of treasure hunting you do do uh, seem to pay off a little more. I think maybe the most interesting thing is that you opted not to do ordeals. You went ahead and took the hook path without having full clear deal world. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Can't stand ordeals. Uh, it's three bosses for one key item plus a cutscene. So, like, the time spent doesn't seem worth it to me. Like, I will do ordeals dead last on a seed like that. I would have come back. I would have done Earth. If it led me to, you know, Magnus, I would have done that. Ordeals would have been the last place. I probably checked it. Unless I see that I'm stuck with, like, Tella early and I'm going to have to D-Machine grind. I, I just can't. Can't stand it. And I figure... Uh, if it's a, a magma key there, I'm going to lose anyway. <laughs> that also led you, though, to not having Paladin Cecil, so the Crystal Sword went useless for you to see. We could have used him. As I got later in the seed and saw, I was like, okay, Crystal Sword I've seen. I think I saw a Crystal Gauntlet earlier on the seed at some point. It's like, yeah, I could have had Cecil do it some damage, but I guess with the levels I had, my melee party at the end wasn't too, too bad. Well, you definitely played extremely well. It was really enjoyable watching you in this race. Commentating and interviewing and all the things you're doing uh, for the league and for just this one race in, in, in particular. Well, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun watching everybody do this. I think uh, your next race is on the 11th. Does that sound right? Next, not 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 tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. Yeah, I think at the same time. Almost all my races are at the same time of day. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck with that. Hopefully, not a 17 out of 17 seed. Technically, we didn't do that tonight. Real close though, right? Yeah, yep. just, uh, I guess just the Earth Crystal is the only thing we didn't see. Yeah, we didn't get to see what was up there. Except for <laughs> I guess with the Crystal and, on, uh, I be missed, you know? And that Dusty the, has... The Dusty, who just finished in third place with a time of 219.56. D-Dusty, I'm gonna uh, take, uh, take my leave now. Thank you guys again. I'll let you guys interview him. Uh, thank you all again, uh, and great race to all racers. Yes, thank you. Great job tonight. So Z-Man continues now the battle against CPU. Which is a personally one of my least favorite fights um i don't know it just bothers me i don't like it um no particular depends reason why <laughs> depends on your setup and where you are because you know you can just do this strat and damage from mazer well mazer only if you have some things to throw 
and Mazer only deals a percentage of your damage, of your HP, so uh, Mazer deals one-tenth of your total HP, so as long as you're healing, got a constant stream of healing, you're not going to die to uh, to Mazer, but it's just, I don't know, it just bothers me, because it's so easy to accidentally attack that second attacker and uh, get Globe 199 and put yourself in a bad spot. Yeah, that's why you really don't want to berserk in that fight. Bad things will happen. Yep, but the that can also make the fight that. longer. So, yes. Gets the adamant, and now Z-Man will short. Yep. And Z-Man should not need any grinding or anything like that, so he's... He does not have to pass, though. Which was... I thought he did the Leviathan fight. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just one of Someone in chat asked if it's randomized, why are the key item spots the same? Basically, it randomizes what key items are in those spots. So the first, you know, the first thing you get at the beginning of the game is the package, but that could be the crystal that you need to finish the game. That could be the pass. That could be the spoon. Uh, it randomizes that. So it kind of, it kind of uh, adds a degree of making the right play or making the right gamble to go to, the, to certain places. You, you know, by, if you just saw Mr. Ubik skipped uh, skipped ordeals, uh, and that was you know that was not uh, not necessary. He didn't need ordeals, so that saved some time. Also, want to correct one thing: the key items are not in the same location. They can be; they're a lot more leaning towards that if you do K1 flags. But uh, for example, uh, Leviathan or not. Uh, Sealed Cave had the spoon. That's a good example. And the crystal was from Bridia's mom, which that's more part of the mystery one than the K flag. But the more you turn up that K flag uh, to K2, K3, the less it becomes about the regular spots. Yes, and the note to explain the no free lunch, um, just uh, a later explanation now. The, if no free lunch is off, you will get a free character in uh, the Watery Pass. So right after you go to Kaipo, where you normally pick up Tello, that's a free character. Edward in Toria Castle will give you a free key item in, if it's off. Uh, you'll get two characters in Mysidia, where you get Palom and Forum. You'll, you can also get another character at the top of Ordeals, where the Tello spot where he comes back. So no free lunch on, remove, no free lunch one removes those you don't get those uh free characters and you also um you don't get a free uh, key item from edward that item that you get from edward is then in the place where Rydia's mom is with the mist dusty gg you got through uh, quite a sea <laughs> what a sea you guys oh man so what stood out to you the most uh just a lot of decision making in that sea pretty well, obviously, starting with the Darkness Crystal, you got a pretty, a lot of options to choose from. You know, you can clear your overworld or try and go to the moon pretty early and see if there are some free bosses kicking around. But I uh, decided to just do a pretty standard route of going through most of the overworld places, finishing the underground first. And then I kind of got the inkling that this was going to be a pretty much a full clear seed around that point <laughs> once I finished the underworld. What did you think of uh, Wyvern down there in the bottom? Uh, that wasn't too bad for me. I mean, at that point, I was so overleveled, I think, that uh, it was just pretty ridiculous. I think that was some of the largest damage numbers I think I've ever seen <laughs> put out in like a run that I've done before. So it was yeah, pretty insane. Yeah, didn't you get that, you reflected that mega nuke back for 10k and then just kind of chopped him up, didn't you? Yeah, I think, I think he might have got one of his nukes, like his regular nukes off, and that was it. He was done. Nice. That Cecil, uh, Cecil with the crystal and the Avenger just ripping through everything at that point. Yeah, that definitely helped, and I, yeah. I, I bet you're glad you picked up that pass from the Leviathan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was nice, that, at least at that point, to uh, when I went back and got it from D-Mist, which I kind of had an inkling once I saw D-Mist that uh, D-Mist was where Wyvern spot, I believe. Um, when I saw him there, I was like, ah, do I just leave now and go and try and see if that's actually crystal there? But 
Yeah, it was nice that I had passed at least when I full cleared and went back. Just make my way there, run right along. Z Man just finished off D Mist, and I believe that was the last lunar boss he had to do, so Z Man should now be on his way to pick up the crystal. Looks like, and then he'll be headed back up to make his run. Uh, now, Dusty, I asked everybody else, and I'll ask you too. Uh, what do you? How do you feel? And what do you think of the changes and flags between the qualifiers and now? Definitely a lot, a lot tougher. Um, after a couple of weeks of practice on qualifiers, it was pretty, pretty simple to be able to roll your way through the majority of the game um, pretty quickly. Uh, K2 adds in a lot more options. And obviously, just uh, without all those items from before, uh, was it switch to T3 and S2? Um, that just like makes the early game a lot more difficult because you're not getting those Gaia drums and you're not finding those Boreases and all the good elemental items in the shops. So it's a, it's definitely a lot tougher, and it's it's brutal that the my average times have basically doubled <laughs> since the the league call the, the actual league flags have started. Yeah, you'll see a lot of league the league qualifier matches. People were sub, most like the top top runners were sub hour. Sub hour, yeah. And now it's you know two hour two hour two hour seeds. Two hour seeds. There's a lot more choice. To, you ha you have to be a lot more uh, cognizant of of your party choices. A lot of times in the ball flags, you could just roll through with anything, and you can and you can still do that to extent these flags, but it's tougher, obviously. Now, was it your levels and how how strong you were? Is what made you make the decision to uh, to not to just clear through the moon as opposed to go to check Earth Crystal because you could have plowed through Earth Crystal like without a, without a problem. Yeah, my my worry was that uh, it was going to still be on the moon and then having to go back through the cutscene of transition and all the uh, going back through the lun lunar subterranean all again uh, to finish off a couple extra bosses. It, right. It's a gamble. It's a gamble either way. I, I, when it comes to those choices, I usually make the standard play, I guess, uh, in terms of just finish off the area you're in. Not always the right play, especially in a rando, um, making the sideways play of just leaving immediately and seeing if that's the right path is sometimes the way to go, or if it is the crystal is always the way to go. But here comes Z Man's effort against the Z yeah. fight. I guess he did, he did have the pass after all. I did, I did not remember him beating Leviathan, so I think he had. I was pretty sure he did the both at once, so I just was not so. And he had, oh, he had Palom in his party. So then, yeah, I got you. Let's see, Dusty, I believe your next race is on the 7th. Anything in particular you do to get ready for that, or just from another one of the practice seats? I want to try more early Darkness Crystal. It's a little intimidating to me sometimes, but honestly, it's the way to go. Uh, not all the time, but sometimes to make that play, I'll just go straight to the moon and see if you can get some free bosses or you know, just bypass uh, going underground immediately. Uh, can some, sometimes be the, the right way. This was an interesting scene because I don't believe I didn't see Sirens. Maybe I missed them, but the, this was the first uh, League Flag scene that I don't think I had Sirens, so I was, didn't really have a great grind uh, choice this time around. Maybe I, yeah, I maybe I missed them, though. I don't think anybody picked up Sirens. No. Now, the, the only shop we didn't see would have been the Blacksmith's shop, and we didn't actually find the Legends sword. Right, right. Uh, elsewise, no, they picked up sirens. No, did uh, everyone make a similar play in terms of, or, or did everyone, did anyone really grind, or did they just go through with the levels they had? That was the thing about the scene. You didn't really need to grind if you played it. Out. Most, most uh, everybody did, it. did trap doors uh, a bit at the time because he was right. doing that before going to the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, a couple trap door grinds, but. No, like, true grind. It just pretty much happened. Yeah, yeah, I picked up most of the trapdoors on the way through the sealed cave, just because I figured might as well to make it easy to basically roll through the rest. But... So forgive me for asking this, uh, if I, it was already asked, but uh, what made you make the decision to drop Rydia 
instead of Sid for Cecil. So the reason why I did that was because I knew I was going to have that Artemis bow and that one Artemis arrow, which I accidentally used at a certain point later on. But uh, the reason why I like Sid is because if I take him to zero miss with that Artemis bow and that Artemis arrow, he's pretty unlikely to die to a big bang and can just... If you Zerk him, you can unlimited, you know, use that Artemis arrow the whole time and deal really high damage. So that was my, my basic reasoning for that, because, and even rolling through the rest of the bosses, uh, I knew he wouldn't, unlikely he would die because of his high health. Yeah, we were we were wondering, we, were, we figured you were, assumed it was going to be Sid, and you're like, whoa, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really like Sid in the back line for, as a, he's, he's a really good archer, funny enough, and when you have an artist, well, an artist arrow, which unfortunately I accidentally used the arrow at some point during my love uh, subterranean grind. He is clicking the way through this fight. Yeah, he's uh, got some high damage. damage. Depending on whether or not you get the Hit health refill. Yeah, figure on doing like 90k damage. Yes, uh, so the health refill, for those that don't know, uh, Zeromus is at, I want to say, 20, we've done 45,000 damage. Um, he, you'll trigger a, you can trigger a health refill, so that reset. Uh, I believe you've got a short amount of time that you can push him over 49,000, and correct me when I'm, when I'm wrong. Um, and skip that health refill, but if he health refills, he pretty much, he goes back, you know, to full health, and you go through it again. Does yeah, that sound about right? At that point, when you get a nice break in the action. Yeah, and if he gets three big bangs off, he starts firing nuke. Uh, but I believe that's before any of that refill or anything happens. But right now, uh, Z-Man's damage is high enough that he shouldn't have to that. I do want to point out Z-Man had a textbook nerf though, and you could tell when the nuke came off that the Big Bang was going to be nerfed because the nuke damage was so low. It was a 400 damage nuke. Yup, the uh, yeah, being able to nerf that is definitely a uh, a very good a good thing. And yeah, he's in the meteor phase, so this is as good as one for him. He just needs to. Any final oh. thoughts, Dusty? Ah, this is an interesting seed. I can't wait to play the next one. <laughs> Get that, got that one out of my system, the two hour and 20 minute one. So, well, we definitely we definitely enjoyed watching you and all the other runners tonight. Um, oh, thanks yeah. so much for uh, commenting, guys, and uh, GG and Grayson. Thanks, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me. Thank you, Dusty. Good luck going yeah. forward. Right. NZ Man has, has finished, finished the fight. 23343. Right, so we have all four of our finishers. Uh, Z Man's not going to join us. Real life demands, which you can understand. Probably took an extra half hour than uh, you expected. Yep. But, you know, that was a. That was definitely a fantastic race to watch. All the runners did a, did a great job running through that. Well, let's again say thank you to RPG Limit Break for posting this tonight. Uh, it's been a thrill to be a part of this with you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Greatly yeah. enjoyed it. And thank you for uh, for helping walking me through my uh, my first ever commentary. Uh, so I, uh, I had a blast uh, commentating with you, commentating the race, and definitely big thanks to uh, J JC87 and Golden Hades for their help with this and everybody else that helps set up all this stuff. There is a lot of action in the Highway to the Zero Zone ahead just to promote some of the upcoming matches at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. That'll be here on RPG Limit Break. Then on Sunday the 5th, that'll be at 8 p.m. here on RPG Limit Break. We've also got Monday Night Racing with that'll be Those... Couch's next race after tonight. That's the community race, is that right? Uh, no, that's I'm just looking at the I'll just the league schedule schedule right now. Uh, I was trying to promote whenever his next match was.
So looks like the next match for Z-Man is going to be on the 7th at 9.30. So that would take us through everyone's races that they still have. Yep. All right. So, uh, yeah, and I will be here with uh, Brewers fan JP tomorrow night for the race uh, with who did you say? I know Inventable is one of them. Uh, Obda Jr. is one of them. The Muppets Ooh. in Space and Fantasia. But yes, so that that should be a fantastic race tomorrow as well. Well, we will say our good nights. Thank you so much for spending your Friday evening with us. Hope everybody had as much fun as we did. Good night, everybody. Yes, thanks a lot. Have a great night. <laughs>